It is Wednesday, my dudes, which means it's time for another First Thoughts Initial Impressions Epic 7 video. This one will be on the immortal Wukong, who was just shown earlier this morning over on Stowe. Unfortunately, Wukong is not accompanied by a video, so I can't give you my impressions on the S3 animation or talk about the voiceover trivia. And this video, I also won't be talking about his Soulburn or his artifact because, well, they're not included in the post. This video also will have me talking for a brief moment about potential leaks to Epic 7, which is something I don't normally do. So if you don't want to be spoiled about stuff, then you can feel free to click off the video. Now, if you look around the internet, specifically on places like Reddit or in Facebook groups, like I said, there are leaks specifically about this character, as well as some planned features that are coming, such as Rift. This announcement for Immortal Wukong, I feel like, is Smallgate's attempt to preempt those leaks to at least give us some official information about the character, so that, that way we have official confirmation and we can talk about it in official channels appropriately, as opposed to what everyone else does, which is just talk about stuff behind uh, the dev's back. Now, I wasn't really going to make this video originally because I usually like to wait until the full actual reveal video is done. Characters have leaked in the past, such as Urban Shadow Shoe, and I've waited the full week and actually uh, until we see everything in order to talk about them. That said, you know, waiting a whole week and not talking about Wukong without acknowledging, you know, this official post, but also not acknowledging some of these leaks, I feel like would be a disservice to some of you watching the video. So. Yeah, the purpose of me making this is so that hopefully you can make informed decisions. I still don't like talking about leaks or acknowledging them because I kind of feel like it hurts the company and it really cheapens the efforts of everyone else involved, right? But uh, as a YouTuber that I like to watch a lot, Pleasant Kenobi says, like, once the cat's out of the bag, like, it's public information. Everyone kind of knows it. Everyone's already talking about it. And, you know, just turning a blind eye to it doesn't help anybody. Me not talking about it, I feel like, is potentially hurtful and harmful to the gameplay experience of you guys that watch my channel. And so, all I'll say on this issue is that nothing that I'm going to talk about in regards to Rift, which is coming apparently soon, is officially confirmed. It's all subject to change, and please take it all with a massive grain of salt. Tristan is probably going to be making a video very similar to this one, because we talked about it before I sat down to record this video. So if you want to see his thoughts on the entire scenario, I will link that down in this video's description and also pin his video once I actually get the link to it. So again, when you're done here, feel free to go over and see what Tristan has to say about the entire thing. So that said, let's jump into it and take a look at The Immortal Wukong, uh, an automatic doll made using a new material developed in Palicia. And this is what the character looks like. Pretty sick, if you ask me. Not anything super unique if you're in like the Japanese uh, like pop culture space, right? If you watch a lot of anime or video games or like Sentai shows, right? You watch Kamen Rider, Ultraman, uh, Power Rangers, any of that stuff. You probably are well aware of seeing characters that have this aesthetic and this design. And, you know, it, it's in other games as well. It's just unique for Epic 7. We have never seen a character that looks like this. I personally think he looks really, really awesome. Right, skipping past his lore here, we get some more official art. Looks super great. Uh, character obviously is meant to commemorate one year of the CN server and its success, so they wanted to do something very special for it. Uh, Immortal Wukong, obviously, being a reference to Sun Wukong from Journey to the West, very famous story, uh, in which you have obviously the immortal Sun Wukong and his like extending power pole staff, which is obviously his weapon here. Pretty cool looking. Uh, I obviously no doubt think people will make the, but can, uh, you know, but can they beat Goku though? Joke. If this character is actually ends up being pretty good, taking a look here at some of the official information, he is a five-star earth elemental Scorpio warrior. So five-star character. Also important to note, it says here, new covenant hero, not new limited hero. So odds are this character will be added to the covenant pool. So do not feel like super pressure to get the character. You will probably maybe get him eventually because it does not appear that he is limited. Earth character, so it's green. And then Scorpio Warrior, same stat line as characters like Arunka or Rem from ReZero, which gives you kind of like a picture of where 
we're going speed wise, very slow base speed, like around 100, 102 or so. Uh, HP is probably capping out around like 20, 22K if you build in like base speed. So realistically for you mid speed players, probably like 15 to 18K or so, I would say give or take. And then attack is probably anywhere from like 2,500 to like 4,000, depending on how you actually build the character. So that is kind of like the stat breakdown where we're going to be. Speed, I don't expect uh, to be super fast either. Like I said, pretty below average base speed on that stat line. So probably realistically like 200, maybe 240 at the top end without sacrificing too much stats. Okay, imprint concentration here is going to be attack. That's fine. Not as good as critical hit chance. Before I give you my two cents of the character, as always, let's quickly read over the kit one time. Skill one is swing, attacks the enemy and grants a barrier to Wukong for one turn. Barrier strength increases proportional to Wukong's attack. When used on the caster's turn, is an AoE attack that hits all enemies. It does not trigger a dual attack, which is fairly standard for uh, certain AoE S1s nowadays. Skill two, the immortal one, increases critical hit resistance and penetration resistance by 35%. When the caster suffers a non-critical hit, increases attack and speed by 20% and can stack up to three times. Kind of sad that the immortal Wukong with the immortal one passive does not have immortality. It's a flavor fail, Smilegate. What are we doing here? Skill three, Heavenly Fighter Strike. We'll only talk about the awakened version. Increases the attack of Wukong for two turns before attacking the enemy and stunning them for one turn. When the caster's attack is greater than the target's attack, damage dealt increases proportional to the difference up to a max of 70% unaffected by elemental disadvantage. All right, let's break down the obvious here. We'll start with Heavenly Fighter's Strike. Getting an attack buff before the attack launches is fairly standard. It is a single target attack that is unaffected by elemental disadvantage, meaning that this green character can attack red characters without a penalty. And it does a stun for one turn. What character is commonly played right now that's red and loses to getting stunned? Oh, right, it's Janua, the character that literally everyone hates playing against and is terrorizing every format of PvP. So it's really clearly obvious that Heavenly Fighter Strike was designed as a way to get around Janua, or at least that's what you think. We already talked about the fact that this guy's a Scorpio Warrior, so he's pretty slow, which means the average Janua is probably outspeeding your Wukong. Um, so potentially he dies before you even get to actually use this and because of how his stats are distributed you're not going to build effectiveness on him so the stun might not matter if you're playing against an er genua or like they pair him with christy or any of this other stuff like if he's on uh bash it or Pelush attack to protect him with a huge barrier so that, that way he doesn't actually proc plan a first and foremost it, it's cute but i don't really see this being the thing that actually deals with Janua, right? Uh, also important to note the verbiage here used, damage dealt increases proportional to the difference up to maximum of 70%. I've seen people talk about already online, oh, it's just like Arunka. Oh, it's just like Hua Young. No, no, that's not the case. So those characters read penetration increases proportional to the difference. And in the case of Arunka up to maximum of 70%. So it's just damage dealt. You still have to deal with the actual defense. So. Uh, this is going to do a lot less damage than some of the attacks you're comparing it to. It's not going to hit as hard as a Runka uh, when they have a barrier. It's not going to hit as hard as Hua Young's kick. It's not going to hit as hard as like Janua's S3, Straze's S3, or Architect Laika, right? It's not going to hit like that. So people who think it's going to be this like massive nuke, no, that's not going to be the case. Unless they, the verbiage here is wrong in the official post, this is just damage dealt, not penetration. Moving back to the Immortal one. Their way of trying to help this character have some bulk, because we talked about like 15 to 18k bulk, is to give it critical hit resistance and penetration resistance by 35%. I'm assuming it goes up to 50% with Malagoras. Critical hit resistance is like okay, but it's not like the best because as we've seen from the past year, people are getting around critical hit resistance because of Landy like fairly easily. People uh, are used to this game. They know this song and dance. Honestly... The fact that when he suffers a non-critical hit, he gets the speed and attack buff is kind of frustrating because it's a very feels bad mechanic, in my opinion, because if you don't get critically struck, you get this massive stat boost and it's infuriating for the opponent. But if you don't proc, uh, you do get critically hit, right? Then you don't get the passive, which feels bad. So like, it's just, 
some uh, some player will always feel bad with this passive in PvP, which I don't really like. And then obviously penetration resistance is their way of saying like. Please, please, we so badly want this character to work against Janua. We so badly want him to be the hard counter to Janua. I'll be real with you. If it, even if it's 50% penetration resistance, like at like 16 to 18k HP or whatever, Janua probably could still kill this character in one hit. Like, so if you lose the 50-50 the on the critical hit resistance, you probably still die. And I know somebody out there is going to be like, but wait, Sue... 50% still a lot. Yeah, 50% damage uh, penetration from Remnant Violet on Massacre. That still one-taps a lot of characters in the game. That still can kill like 20k characters, right? So even if you cut the damage in Genua by half, uh, or I should say the penetration in half, it's not quite half damage, right? You're probably still dying, right? Especially when you factor in the fact that he is an Earth hero. And then you factor in the Frenzy, which gives you bonus damage against the type advantage. It's not very good, right? So on paper, he reads like a Genua counter, but I seriously doubt that that's the case. The one thing I do really like, though, is actually the S1 swing. Uh, in matches where you are playing against a lot of AoE characters, I think swing is kind of, kind of cracked, right? So swing is AoE. Obviously, it's going to proc an Elbrus Ritual Sword or a counter, like, almost guaranteed, because that's how Epic 7 is in 2024. If you ever press an AoE attack, your opponent literally gets four counters and three Elbrus procs, even when they only have one Landy on their team, right? That's just how this game works now. So getting the barrier to give you some protection is nice, and if they don't critically strike on the counter, then you get this gigantic attack and speed buff. And 60% speed, man, this character is going to be zooming... This character's going to be over 300 speed. Character's going to hit like an absolute truck. So I could see, maybe not as a Genua counter, but I think against enemies that have a lot of counter AoE characters, I think Wukong is a pretty competent bruiser, right? He'll stack up pretty well in those matches where he eats a couple of counters, and then he's just going to be zooming. And if you've got a way to protect him with a Knight or Soul Weaver, he's just going to be off to the races. He's just going to be lapping landies like nobody's business he's going to just be s3 and people down uh he's going to be s1ing just getting barriers doing tons of damage so i'm excited to see how he pans out in world arena i don't think he's particularly amazing in that area i think he is just solid right again genua could kill him in one hit he doesn't really do anything to haste right uh haste probably still kills him in one hit solver and lie kills him in one hit uh with his bulk stats Senya just does a huge chunk of damage to him. So he doesn't feel like he's going to be a meta character. He just feels like he's going to be just good enough to actually see some amount of play. So those are my thoughts on him as far as that goes. On the PvE side of things, though, it's a completely different story. And that's kind of where we're at. Like, if it was just the PvP aspect, if that's all we were talking about, I would have waited till next week. But considering that we have this leak here, again, take it with a grain of salt. It's not guaranteed. Uh, it is not confirmed it is subject to change. But we have essentially a data mine showing us what is potentially the new Rift. You can only play Earth characters here in it, so you have to play all green characters. Now, if you read here, we have this skill here, Corrosive Horror, attacks the enemy, a critical hit will increase the skill cooldowns of the target to max. So whatever character, as you can see here, attacks the front row first. Whatever character is in the front, is highly susceptible to just never having any cooldowns. They're basically a sitting duck unless they have a really strong S1. When attacking, increases the critical hit chance of this character, the boss, by 35%. And penetrates the target's defense by 50%. Huh. It's almost like Wukong has exactly 35% critical hit resistance. And based on the Mulligora's penetration resistance, also up to 50%. So it's almost like... A frontline Wukong mitigates this entire mechanic on a boss. And also, when the caster suffers a non-critical hit, they get an attack and speed buff. Which means that they will go super fast, which is incredibly relevant for this passive skill, 8 Horrors. At the start of battle and after attacking the caster's turn, grants 8 Abyssal Tentacles. Maximum of 8 Tentacles can be granted. After suffering attack that is AoE... Dispels one Abyssal Tentacle, and every time this effect is dispelled, inflects Sever for two turns. When using an attack that targets all enemies, if there are three or fewer enemies damage dealt 
increases with fewer enemies. So it does more damage to you if somebody on your team happens to die, but it has these tentacles that can only be dispelled when being hit by an AoE attack. And you can see here the tentacles increase the boss's damage. And when suffering an attack that is not an AoE, it drastically reduces the damage dealt, somewhat similar to Blooming Snaglitch. Oh, look, it's a character with an AoE attack on the S1 that provides a barrier. So if it's in the front, Wukong can get rid of the mechanic, ignores the reset mechanic, has a barrier to protect itself, and it will massively increase its damage and speed by being your frontliner, right? Now, the other thing to talk about here it potentially is that everything in the character's kit is also uh, injury based, right? So that's pretty much it, right? The character is just tailor made. Wukong is tailor made, it feels like, for this subject to change rift that is apparently coming. And if you look at the other characters that are in the pool, right? Since it's an injury based thing, any health scaler you put in the front that's a tank that doesn't have a barrier is super susceptible, right? So Albedo, Yulha, Mort, right? These characters are all health scalers. They don't really have AoEs, or at least not consistent AoEs. They're going to get injured to high health. Some of you might be thinking like, hey, it's Violet, but this character, you can't have Fighting Spirit and you can't dodge. And certain portions of this actual skill say that you cannot trigger a counterattack. So if we go back here, right? Green Armin is got a, is a great tank that has barriers to get around injury and has an AoE attack, but doesn't you only can have that AoE attack on a counter and you can't counter the boss. So yeah, so like Violet's out, Armin's out, most of your health scaling tanks are out. Wukong is just kind of the like de facto frontliner the more you start to look at the actual pool. Uh, as for AoE characters that are out for uh, green units, like Landy is inconsistent, Vivian is inconsistent, Bologna is actually fairly consistent, but like most of the AoE characters in green, they take their sweet time to get there and you're going to be in a situation where you are going to uh, eat a lot of damage and not get the tentacles down very, very quickly. So Wukong is your only real consistent AoE character. Uh, as for sustains... We just got Bernard, who just happens to be a cleanser that spams barriers and heals if your whole team is green. It's almost like he was tailor-made for this uh, subject-to-change mode that we might be getting, right? So, yeah, hopefully you start to see where I'm coming. As cool as I think Wukong might be for World Arena, this character is probably going to be a very strong almost must pick up character for what's hypothetically going to be announced in the next like two to three weeks. So if Rift is something that you want to do and the stuff that we've seen doesn't change, you're going to need Wukong, right? And considering how much of an investment Rift is, hopefully now you can understand why I'm talking about Wukong in this context in this video. Because if you're not going to pick up Wukong, on release or not start making your preparations for what characters you want to play it's going to be rough rift is a, a game mode where you have to be grinding it all the time into in order to build up to the maximum level of efficiency and start reaping the benefits of that rift the faster the earlier you start it the more value you get out of it so you want to be ready to go on day one with strong characters and you want to be prepared to go so knowing that and what the mechanics are and knowing that Wukong is going to be core to that strategy most likely if things do not change that's really important again i do want to point out though before we close this video it is a covenant hero not necessarily a limited hero we are also going into july which historically is the month where we get summer units and lately the trend seems to be two limited units per each of these events since uh last summer right uh and also we're going into the uh wc 2024 which also means probably even more new units and more new features so it's gonna be a rough couple of weeks next like five or six weeks are probably gonna be very jam-packed for epic 7 despite the lull and stuff that we've had uh we're probably gonna be ramping into overtime so manage your resources accordingly again if you want to play rift if things are exactly as uh, have been uh, 
reported upon if things do not change, right? This character is going to be really important. So let me know your thoughts on Wukong and all the stuff we discussed down in the comment section below. And make sure, again, you check out Tristan and his take on all of this. As always, enjoy the rest of your day, the rest of your week. Catch you in the next one. Bye-bye now.